Today, Zechariah 14, verses 3 to 5. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. And in his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west, making a very large valley. Half of the mountain shall move toward the north and half of it toward the south. Then you shall flee through my mountain valley, for the mountain valley shall reach to Azal. Yes, you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Ju Judah. Thus the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you. This final chapter in the book of Zechariah more or less shows a, a resolution to the battle between good and evil. It seems to put that, put that together. There's an end, there's a conclusion, there's a finality. God gathers all the nations, and him, he himself does it, and there's a final sorting out between the good and the evil. He will fight against all the nations who oppose him. Jesus will come down, and he will come to the Mount of Olives, and the mountain will be split, creating a plane. See somebody come down out of the sky, and then the whole mountain separates into two pieces and splits. And then God's people flee through the opening, through the opening created. God will come with all his saints. We see this picture, this language picked up by Paul in the picture he gives us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. God will come with all of his saints. Yeah, there will be a time when Jesus calls and those who die believing in him are resurrected and they will meet together in the air, always to be with him in the Lord. That's chapter 4. But uh, Paul picks up this language right out of the prophet Zechariah. At the end of the age, God resurrects all of the saints and they meet Jesus at his return. So Zechariah tells us that God will come with all of his saints. And Paul picks up this language over in the New Testament when he talks about the second coming, the literal, physical, visible, audible second coming of Jesus, the personal coming of Jesus. He will come, chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians, and he will call them forth from the grave and they'll be resurrected. Where are the people brought from? They're brought in from out of their graves. The graves are open. All of our lives, we've never seen this kind of resolution. We're living kind of in this, always in this in-between thing, between, you know, the creation and now between the, that and the recreation. But there will come a time of final intervention, final uh, time when God comes and intervenes. And, and it may be that many of us who are alive today, we, it seems as though we're living down at the close of all that. And these eyes might, may see it. Because we've never seen it and nobody living and living memories ever seen an intervention like this necessarily, doesn't mean we shouldn't expect it because look, when we look at the Bible, when we look at all the different things that have been said in the Bible that tell us exactly what human nature is like, they tell us uh, prophecies that tell us before something happens, tell us how it will happen and what will happen and where it will be and when it will be. When we see all those things lining up, we have to realize that, that the things that are told to us about the future that have not come to pass yet, those things would be absolutely certain based on all the other evidence God has lined up in there for us. So it's a misunderstanding for people to think that, well, we're just, we're just talking blind faith, you know, lose your mind, crazy blind faith. The faith of the believer is really built upon a trusting relationship. You've learned to trust God, and then you look back and you've said, the things that God's word tells us about humanity, about human nature, about fallen nature, those things are absolutely true. And then that the prophecies that are laid out show us that he can tell the future before it happens, which, you know, not... You really can't do that, but God can do that. There is a space based on evidence, a space for our faith in him. And so it's not just a blind, silly, mindless, you know, kind of belief at all. Not at all. It's based on evidence, the evidence of a, a trust, a person we have a trusting relationship with who has demonstrated their trust. People say, yeah, that's never happened. Uh, my grandpa didn't see it. The great grandpa didn't see it. And nobody's ever seen that. Well, yeah, but let's look at the Bible. Let's look at the evidence. So we're looking at evidence, faith, uh, but faith within evidence. But the picture is different from what's commonly seen. We believe based on faith. Faith, however, is built up out of the evidence and the trusted relationship. Mm -hmm.